What is the greatest gift anyone can receive? For me, it's a dream to be like a 450 milliliter can of black label. <laughs> but the greatest gift anyone can give is trust. Thank you, Christina. Special. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank everybody coming in this hectic, uh, the hottest Friday in April, I guess. Wonderful, and they say the first snow was the earliest ever in history. Global cooling, what would ever know. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the head and the heart. I'm a scientist who studied physics in mid door in the Chamber of Mines building in the post grad in geology. I am a nerd. <laughs> I'm being a nerd. Later in life, I was even older than Christina, I was 48 years old. A miracle happened. Somebody dragged me and I joined Toastmasters and I made a fool of myself about a hundred times. I'm still a member of Toastmasters and it learned me not to be afraid of people watching me. This is one of our biggest fears and we cover it up by. So, being a nerd, but learned to be a, a smooth tongue grease monkey, there's a few stories to share. And it's about life ahead if I dream to be an entrepreneur. Think of it. Once upon a time, a long time ago, in the Kalahari Desert, left two little frogs, Freddy and Johnny. They were happy, man. The little pond, they cast mosquitoes. Everything was fine. Suddenly, the big rock came. Johnny said, Freddy, we must search for water. No, man, you're so negative. It was rain tomorrow. Freddy, we must go. Eventually they hopped on in the desert, on and on and on. Days later, at the end of their strength, they found a well. Freddy said, whoa, let's jump in man. But if we jump in here, how will we get out again if this dries up as well? But Freddy's pinches has a good day. Johnny smelled the air. He said, there's something in the air. And he hopped on and on, and the eagles and crows passing him. And a miracle happened, he was all dead. From horizon to horizon was a swamp. And there she was, emerald green. Walls all over her body, covered with a grey slime. She so smiled at him with a wide, toothless grin. She was the most beautiful thing he ever saw. They came together, she laid a million eggs. And little tadpoles croaking in the night. They lived happily ever after. Ladies and gentlemen, our biggest threat is jumping into wells. Listen slowly. I also want to demonstrate the power of a story. For each of us is a fork in the road. You are very, you are very young, man. Well, you haven't been seen in 23 yet. The forks in the road in the changing society will happen over and over and over again. We're in the most complex time in ever in history, in the shadows of the greatest revolution. Greater than the French in Nazi and it happened in 1958. There's only one guy here I think was born in 1958 before that, and myself. <laughs> what happened in 1958? Internet. The internet. Oh, he's a star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, internet, 1963, you can go in, but the big thing was 1995, Netscape browser. Everything changed. I had uh, I studied computer science as well, we did POMS card, even had an email address in 1992, CompuServe, dial up, it worked. But the browser changed everything. In fact, we're all confused. And anyone who tells you I know is a fool. Nobody knows, not even Christina, but she knows a bit more than us. So it's important to know that today there's a fork in the road and the changes, the, the change in technology wipe out jobs like nothing before. But you're going to create a lot of new ones, but they're going to happen later. So we all are forks in the road. Make no mistake about it. So to go further, for today, it's the head and the heart, and the, the goal that ends the rainbow. If I pitch, if I talk, if I market, if I talk to people, and they only talk facts and figures, I miss out 70% of the impact. We had a great, uh, a great lecture, it was about three, four weeks ago, Christina, where he spoke about how, what to put in a pitch. I found it brilliant. I photographed everything myself. <coughs> uh, and me and Christina was really rich. So we did that. Don't sell me crap, man. Sell me something sensible. Let's work a bit today on this. And you might ask, you as a grease monkey, who the hell are you? But let's get to that one. Ladies and gents, 
You've got a piece of paper, each one of you. I want the guy with the strongest guy with the most muscles. <laughs> Wiggling like me, what's your name? Avelino. 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 Look it up. Um, <laughs> you will say, anybody that cheats, you hit him. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to take that piece of paper, this one guy, hold it in the air. Not cheating, you watch them? Yeah, 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 I see them. Uh, that guy, guy cheating. Close now your eyes, and anyone that keep eyes open will be slapped on the back way. Okay, close your eyes, come. Thank you. No cheating. Fold the thing, fold the paper at once. Fold it once. No cheating. Fold it once. No, no washing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Turn it clockwise, that means to the right a few times. Thank you. Get off the bottom left hand corner. Mm -hmm. Bottom left hand corner. What the heck is up? Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Fold it again. <laughs> Turn it to the left a few times. Happy clockwise. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Get off the top right hand corner. Mm -hmm. We don't know how to do it. Top the game. The last time. Top the game. Thank you. It's a bit difficult now. To the right. A few times. And clear off the bottom. Left down the corner. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you might open your eyes. Unfold your piece of paper. Keep it in the air that you all can see. That one is terrible. I like this one. What is your name? Anneli. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, also listen. You all have an interview. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What is the lesson? You all have exactly the same instructions. I carry in my pocket my iPhone and my Samsung. I can tell you what the weather is now and bloody will stop. You all have the same stuff. Hit it the miscom. The moment I said turn it a few times, that was the miss. And then he said fold it like this or like that. Communication misses up everything. Either we do it bad, we're not specific, or we don't listen, misses up everything. That is life. You live well. That's not the most funny. Let us enter with the movers on a disclaimer. Uh, I'm going to bad mouth people, I'm going to be sexist, racist. Talk dirty about people, but remember my victim will always be the hero. So don't ram out and slam the door. There's a reason for it. Don't can't talk bad about somebody because there's something good coming from it. And uh, let's enjoy it. Secondly, more important, don't take notes, please. Yeah, luckily, nobody books here. Don't take notes, not me. Either. Sit back and relax. Uh, Christina will publish this book well, somewhere. Mm -hmm. Try to remember it on the website. So go there and click on top of the bar. Everything I say is already there. All the visuals are already there and about 10 articles on different aspects of pitching. How to get funny while you pitch. How to nail it. About at least 10. I wish I read at the time for the Institute of Industrial Engineers. And any industrial engineers here? That's not a bunch of nerds, but I love it. <laughs> I lectured right up here, great stuff. So I th I just remember the word of so simple as that. It's all there. There's also, and that is, uh, Avelino will hit you all. If you don't do it, we'll check you out. There's a little form to fill in. I like it. It was awful. It was terrible. Uh, let's do it again, but let's do it different. Don't get this guy again, please, or what else. But get your comments in. It helps Christina in organizing it. Promise? 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 Thank you. Get back and stay on. So many years ago, at least a thousand years ago, 1125, 
the French invaded the United Kingdom. Now, that's, they hate each other to this moment. Uh, in London and Paris, the big thing is frog jokes, or British jokes. I mean, they hate each other. They came again with the horses on the command of the Duke of Normandy. Another side, kind of bit of polish them off, was King Harold II, who waited for them. We can kill the frogs, play by out. On the Sunday morning, the troops on their horses galloped to watch each other. Twenty British for one Frenchman is going to be a massacre. <coughs> At least 200 meters apart to stop. And King Harold, King Harold screamed, Tally ho! And the Duke of Normandy screamed, Avancé! The British jumped off their horses, pulled their swords, and ran into battle, just to make it a massacre over and done with in five cruel minutes. But the French, they never play the game as supposed to be, they never follow the rules. They stayed on top of their horses. They drew their swords and they galloped on top of the horses and they massacred the British. I mean, the horse is a big animal. Nothing left. The last time they ever lost a battle on one soil. How on earth is that possible? You may ask. With this, I can stay on top of the horse. A small thing that make all the difference. Why I tell the story is, this is the physical metaphor. A metaphor is powerful when I do my pitching, if I can show you something. You know, I was judging an ableist competition, one boring PowerPoint after the other. A lady came, in a garage, she makes bags for babies' nappies, but nice things, not this ugly stuff, beautiful stuff. She dished it down, you could feel it smell. This is the one in the competition, 3.5 million rand. It's a dish of bags. So in this, a small thing will make the difference, but use a metaphor if we, if, if we work uh, with people. In the mind, the left brain and the right brain, concepts, pictures, views, it's much, much more than complex than this. Uh, in, in the articles, there's quite a bit more on it. You know, to stimulate it more that, what does music do to the mind? <coughs> The left, left brain, facts and figures. The mammal brain, images and movement. The dog will wave his tail. I also do this. The cat will scratch. We are mammals. Remember it. So we love body movement. We love. Yeah, this. Don't do it. Ladies, if you're shy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in working with people, Take in account the whole thing. And right there, the size of a peanut. The reptile brain. Two things are stuck on me. Fight and flight. This is critical. And as I go along, I'm going to show you case, I'll do a few case studies. Did this go right or did it go wrong? When you walked in and who the hell is this guy? My, I'm going to, actually going to make fool of myself and have to stand up here with all my <coughs> um, uh, Who the hell is he? Uh, fight flight. Should I hit him or shall I run away? <laughs> and you've got to do that right because this disperses chemicals in your mind. If I, in fact, something frightens me, what do I do? In five minutes, it's all in the blood. You can't work with people if they shiver. It's about the whole mind. Music, for instance, if I play heavy rock, it goes to the cerebellum, which is the movement, not I start tapping on the floor. Mine is what not. To play slow music by Bach or something. If you want to write a poem and think something, play Bach. It's boring, but it works. But that's a different story. <laughs> the metaphor. And a metaphor is a physical thing, like that lady with the bags. Touch it, feel it. It's also to be here like today is like climbing Table Mountain on a cold August morning. It's close to hell, I'm telling you. <laughs> so a metaphor is like to be. But the best metaphor, lies in stories. The frog jumped into the world. A fairy tale. Each one in the world, anybody, believes animals can talk. Nobody thought I was stupid when the frogs stopped talking. Anybody think we're stupid? Yeah, I think so. Oh, shit, crazy. We believe animals can talk. Frogs can talk, we just all oh, oh, listen to it. So talking animals, fairy tales, little fables, just a nice story of and how to tell a story of I was born in Belfort West and my grandpa took me to the weekend. That's boring. Who cares? 
the story can be told in a way that it captures me. The story does it all. And Christina and I specifically spoke about that. I'm going to illustrate it with, uh, with cases. That's my thing. For instance, if I want to use a story of a situation of conflict in our, in our business. Twelve years ago, the three tenors, Pavarotti, Domingo and Carreras, sang in front of the Union buildings. Seats were sold on the black market for 10 to 20,000 a seat. I mean, that was not price. People flew from New York. The second time ever on the African continent. <coughs> but life is not simple. Third three. What would us engineering types do? <laughs> Drop the damn thing down and plant a new one. What's the problem? 120 seats worth a couple of thousand a seat. Beyond that tree. Chop the damn thing down. What's the case? Life is never simple, ladies and gentlemen, because that morning when they came to the chainsaws, a couple of ugly people sat in front of the tree, chained themselves to the tree with big locks and said, you touch the tree, you touch us. Some were even armed. This tree is a historical plant to commemorate the battle of my humor. You're only going to chop it down. Forget it, man. Deadlock. What do we do in conflict? A strong guy like him, I'll always take his side. Okay, and okay, no, okay. I'll, I'll go with you. Do we gain anything if I agree with you? No. The worst is to meet each other halfway. So what? But if he views views, his culture, his background, and mine, and my generation, his generation, could we come together one plus one become thing in everything. That's how we should do in our business. And I'm going to end off uh, at this point your fourth largest enemy in a new business is your competition. The third, most important, worse than them, is the state brothers, my aunt's brother who put some money in your business. My own brothers and sisters have known because my dad put in some money in my business, what they are getting out of it. You'll hear that. The second most dangerous thing in a business, I've been on the steps of the Supreme Court with the other company, with your partners, over and over and over again. This model, a wise person got into me and said, what's your case? We need to protect the tree. What's the tree? What's your case? We need to sell the seats. That's a big event. You want to make money, man. And he said, but what about caring for people? Yes, we all care for people. They got to the solution. And they said, oh, one for the first to be answer. And that one. Uh, they kept the tree. They got a sponsor that bought all the seats and donated it to a certain type of person to come there and enjoy the evening. Who were those first? Who were those people? Beautiful. They found 120 seats for blind people and the guide dogs. Beautiful. In every conflict, there's an answer. Just enough. So let's go through a few case examples. And in the case examples, little listen here and there, then I'll be finished long before time. And then we uh, can say, what does it mean? As people, if we come together here in this room, at grandma's birthday, at the church, at anything where people come, even if it's family, especially if it's family, to go through a stance of there is no opinion. Either I talk loud to keep people away from me, or we introverts, the worst thing for me is a cocktail party. So the five phase, so never jump upon people if they have phase one. Let them tear paper, tell a story, shake their hand. I differ from you. Um, so unless I, have a, I have an opinion that's definitely different from you guys. So, in the phase of, this is nice here, I don't, I'm not really saying anything, but it's actually a great bunch out here. The fourth one, exuberance. I cannot work with people if you are not in exuberance stage. In a company session, and I counted yesterday, I did 64 companies. Everything from funeral directors to discovery to anything. Take you, the top management, eight hours to get them to trust each other. Every company with a knife on the back. But you can work. But you do certain things, but you don't allow open discussion. Exuberance, 
very important one is silence. If I pitch, if I do my marketing and I talk to a group of people like this or I talk to only two people, how I begin in the no opinion stage and how I end in the sad stage, it's critical, it's more important than anything else. The beginning and the ending. And we'll, we'll give some clues on that. Photograph taken in uh, exactly 40 years ago. Time takes on for us. Uh, I met this guy recently and he gave me the photo. He's a, uh, he's a lawyer in Pretoria, but this is the bottom of the pyramid. I'm a bad mother like this. These guys, those days, the big moustache and the side whiskers did it all. The fourth team of Indrach Posses. Rugby is beside the point. Everything was fueled by Fritterdis Gunster and Tassen Bat. That's all that comes. I mean, look, there's this all in his own. You see there, and uh, there's another one. Uh, the fourth team. Bottom of the pyramid, I was not in the fourth team because I wasn't even good enough for them. If you use it, you use this. But these people, uh, that guy was my roommate. Uh, these people, good for nothing, <coughs> just a bunch of jokers. <coughs> now that guy, that trick, he came there as a first year student, studied law, I think, bottom of the pyramid, and had to do the public speaking competition for first years. And he came and entered the room, he took out a balloon, and he wangled it so that he used to talk last, cheating all the way, you know? And he picked the balloon, Whoa! So now what, that's what I think, what everything was said before me. Ah, everyone hated him, but obviously he won the competition. Because he started in a brilliant way. He seems to do it right all the way. Seems to be it all the way. Uh, if you had to hand him last past 30 years ago, to be a millionaire today, the same bugger. Shows you what picking of bubbles of balloons can do. So not bad now, I think I'm just contrasting. Uh, when we are young, we can, we, can, we can be wild. We can be wild and do wild things. You stay away from the gun, flip the discounts. But the sip of tussing that now and then is good for the mind. So, of course, never look back. He's the guy that actually invented satellite TV, huh? well, indirectly. Never ever look back. Interesting, he's one of the third richest persons of Africa now. Third or fourth. He never takes a salary. They don't pay him, so you can do as they like. They don't pay him, so I don't work for you. It works. Beautiful model. He's standing down now. Men of steel. Men of like us work in hard industry. I work in a steel company. In this case, there's no, nothing good to be said to a person, so I'm not mentioning his name. I think he's still alive. The company had 70,000 employees as a palace staple. 1989, listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, and then the, the, the sacking of people started from 70,000 down to 20,000, 50,000 people on, on April Fool's Day 1994. Everybody about 50 didn't return to work. You have two doctors, doesn't care, get out. A lot of damage was done. Anyway, later on there was a meeting, the, the, the mining division, the general managers of the mining, iron or steel, Colorado, I was there to meet the new CEO. I was sitting in the corner, business development. The stage I was working in Kazakhstan. You know where Kazakhstan is? The wrong side of the Ural Mountains. There you talk Russian, you drink vodka. And then, uh, <laughs> the, the new CEO was always happening and we afraid of him. And we said, the senior people in the, in the, in the mining division we came half an hour late. He threw a bunch of paper on the table with yellow stickers and said, Are oh, you out of your minds, huh? Do you have a cooking clue what's going on? What's this mess, man? Let's see if we can fix it. What happened? A red car brain went into flight mode immediately. Started shivering. What do you do in flight mode? I cover my back. That's all <coughs> For the next eight hours. <coughs> Nothing, no creativity, nothing. He wiped out easily one to two billion rand in one sentence. If he came early, and he said, Mariki, Mariki, you're from Rachel around here. Then I read your articles, good stuff. I, I need you today with this bunch of men. And you trust him as far as he can for you. Uh, 
you are from uh, mining of uh, coal. Oh yes, you had a record record last week, right? If you did that for half an hour, and came in and made a joke, I would give you sleepless nights all the yellow paper and say, come on, so ladies and gentlemen, let's do it together. A billion rand, I promise you. Don't fight, fight, fight people. The scenario, suck up all the way. Two young engineers, 23, who, who here are younger than 23? Be honest. Almost everybody. Anyway, when you're 23, anything is possible. Two guys came to me and uh, got an idea, you know. And that was before the recession, so my purse was a bit of And uh, took them a few hours to convince me. They will develop the product and I'll pay for it. Sucker. Then I slept over it, my wife and my daughters almost killed me. But I said no. At that point, I was in there lecturing them for seven years. I know a few things. In fact, I was lecturer at an innovation and strategy for UNISA for seven years. Lovely. Not that that's all the answers. And I said, we'll abide by the golden rule. He who has the gold makes the rules. <laughs> Therefore, I set out how we should do it. Put a lawyer in. Lesson number one we, we, we did, which we learned over time, with my partner, never divide the pie too early. Your pie partner might, take, might turn lazy and still wants his or her 30% that you agreed upon. To expand the pie first before dividing. We agreed all that. Got a graphics artist thing and um, software developer. And we worked for one and a half years. And suck I paid. I didn't pay salaries, I paid air tickets, I paid com com computers, it cost me a little fortune. But I stuck to the rule. At the end of, that's now seven years ago, a good venture had taken five to seven years. We're ready for venture, a real venture capital. I flew up, up down here, we went to pay venture parts. The banks laugh you out of the door. I don't know if they're better now. They do not understand what our idea is. They only understand physical things. So the Absalom FNB was a lot of them. They didn't give, even get got past the opening place. We had venture partners, we had a good reception there, but we couldn't coin it. You know, we were one and a half years of work going down the drain. Then Microsoft and Ada's competition came up in Johannesburg. Flew up. Because I'm dumb, I'm a jack of all trades. Get somebody in that knows. And uh, I got in a psychologist. We worked out the pitch. The lessons I've learned from that guy, industrial psychologist. We broke the PowerPoint in pieces. We worked for one full week. There was all we had is one big picture, a zero size, with the basics of it, and the pen. Chalk and talk is more powerful than about anything else, which is this movement. They invited the audience to participate, but the big thing was how did they start? They stood next to it. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, the 23 year old one. I'm Sharon Amod from Verulam Kwazulu Natal. My parents came here, ex parents came here as um, to cut sugar cane. We're a proud group, because one of them, well, Mahatma Gandhi, did you know? But life is bad. I'm not happy. I don't have a girlfriend. Look at all my muscles, and I don't know. Well, they said that, what, what did the ladies in the audience say? They said, Afsha. <laughs> now they have this. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jokke de Wet. I'm from Potschef Stroom, the old Vestals Hall. We came here in ox wagons. I've got a girlfriend. I'm going to marry her one of these days. Where, man? And everybody was laughing. Ladies and gentlemen, you see this. Uh, any ideas how we could take it further? The thing, uh, the judges came. No, man, don't do that. At the end, the judges did the presentation for them. Next morning we won it. Don't win real money, but you win computers and uh, chartered accounts doing books and all of that, but you win the credibility. We got eight and a half million rand in venture capital and bits and pieces. And uh, only this week sold the company in the United States. I bought my wife a four by four. It didn't become a multi millionaire No. You think that's it, that's not the case. Not that bad success, but the lessons of doing things step by step, up through the desert. Don't jump in rolls. Stick to some rules. That partner might be your biggest enemy. That was a wonderful experience. This phase of my life, I'm a grandpa of five, and I'm my age. 
But to, to, to do this now, to do something more than just talking, it was brilliant. Then I started next week into the third circle with, with the economists and uh, what's it called? Chartered accountants. I've got a cooking crew was going there, selling out there as well. Oh, as well this week. But then we're going to do next week with the money. <laughs> uh, it's not that money, it's, not the, it's the lessons that's wonderful. So, in the wrong direction. If you work with people in our pitching, in our marketing, even if it's only me and you, the worst, the worst amount of people we work with is the three of us. Two is company, three is a crowd. Don't be a four, it's not. Look at the restaurant with the three people, one also going to age. But we are <laughs> third animals, and as third animals, you know, safety, belonging, self-esteem, self-actualization, we are curious. Things need to be neat. Stewards in a row, camera. Sympathy, are you okay? Spirituality, 99.9% .9 of people in the world believe in a higher being. Interesting. The top seller in books today is erotica, you know. Paralytic religion today. Top seller. Achievement and pride, anger and revenge, competitiveness. Who's got the best uh, tier picture? Little competitions. Adventure, fear and resolve. If I work with people, keep that in mind. It's in my articles. Even if my pitch is only five minutes. The person to make a decision out there at the table is also afraid. This is critical. Because what we ever heard, we have caps in the dog. You know, and uh, say JP. Mm -hmm. Hello, JP. Hello. <laughs> I got a letter from him uh, begging for some money. Forget it now. <laughs> you sold the company, so. <laughs> the mental mind of them thrives on body language. If I do this, stuff you all. I'm important. You know, arrogant. Don't cut your mouth. And ladies tend to do this. Um, I'm showing I'm a bit afraid. Work with your hands. Did you know that? Go a bit overboard. The top thing in body language is the eyes. If I look at you, one, two, three, four, and five seconds. One, two, three, four, five seconds. One, two, three, four, five seconds. And one, two, three, four, five seconds. Anything more is glaring. <laughs> Anything less is glancing. But we love when somebody looked me in the eye. I love brown eyes. <laughs> it's beautiful. A, a, a girl with brown eyes. <laughs> <laughs> look at eyes. Uh, look at this. The, the, the body thrives if somebody looks me in the eyes. Can you shake a hand? How do I walk? You, you will able to camera this. Uh, you know that? And uh, Oh yes, and... Uh, doesn't work. A salt pillar doesn't work either. Standing by the by the lectern, except if you are the state president, try to avoid. But just walk around. The body language has got more impact than the words. You won't believe me, that's a fact. I make my decisions. I sat for interviews, I say thousands. It's a fact that in an interview for a job, with this 90% decisions are taken within 30 seconds. The first 30 seconds, who even heard what the person got to say? It's a fact. It's a fact. So, the body says it all. <coughs> Medi clinic case, this is one of the most beautiful in my life. A friend of mine, Ibrahim, he's an Indian guy, Ibrahim is a radiologist, came to me about pitching for a hospital. The radiologist pitching for this hospital. Uh, against other radiologists, because when they get it, they can put in your laboratory all the machines, you know, all the patients, and they make big money. So he came there with a pile of the stick, Calibri 8 point, Latin. He's going to present to the top management of the hospital group. So I asked him, what's the first question we ask? Who is the audience? That's the first question. If you don't know, find out. I asked Christina, who on earth is this people going to sit here today? Because I am afraid. I said, name you. Beautiful. We went through the list. He said, that the, the, the CEO is probably not going to be there. Uh, he, he's a medical doctor. There's a chartered accountant, a lawyer, a HR. He said, but 
They don't going to understand this. I said, I don't think so either. So even on, if you work with less than, say, seven people, on a table with a piece of paper, you can chalk and talk. That's what everyone did. The hand of Bill Allen Lincoln's wife, 1880. Uh, but he said, the first words was, thank you for coming. Mag ek maar Afrikaans praat, dit gaan vir my baie lekker bewees. The surprise of the Indian guy, can I speak your first language? The finger, thanks for being here, is great. We look at your company with interest in how you came with the last 25 years, tell them about themselves. Nothing is nice to tell you, tell you about where oh, you come from, you study there, people love it. The world of radiology is going to be so, so, and so, and one can make a lot of money if you do that, that, and that. The common enemy is Nikkei 911 and life attacks. Trust them as far as you see them. They are now in Germany collaborating and telling you. I'm lying on this, something like that. The common enemy is a great thing to get people on your side. The last thing is, please, if you do a pitch, the worst thing for that person to do is to make a decision. The moment I make a decision, so, please don't make a decision. Let's talk about it later. But my phone is in my pocket. You can phone me at 3 o'clock in the morning. Obviously, it's because I can't take oh, I don't know. I don't know really well. So simple. The physical metaphor, and nobody was made a fool of by talking Latin and electronics. If you are small, ugly, dumb, and stupid, mixed with clever people and beautiful people, the guy with the muscles, okay, you are excluded. But the rest of us gentlemen, you've got muscles in places. You have even got places. <laughs> <laughs> His mother sent him to me uh, two years ago. Adrian Lerp, Mr. South Africa. He's now to go out in this world to, as he is here, and in the same way I got an honest degree, cum laude or something. Adrian was not stupid. Came to me a, a humble person. Can you believe it? That face. And Adrian said, I can't talk to some of the people. Please help me. Somebody thought they might touch monsters. We did a, the first thing was a big fundraising for the Yakaranda Children's Home with a, with a auction of uh, artwork. Other started off, the first idea was to tell about all, everything that the sport and they played for the blue bulls and all that, all those boring things. I mean, blue bulls could hear us. Uh, <laughs> we, we got a social worker in, get somebody else in. And the social worker said, Adrian, Girls love to cry. They get them to cry. You'll sell the stuff. He started off, he walked, there was an audience about 200 of the richest in the east of Pretoria. You should see the cars in the parking lot, the best of the German mechanical stable you can imagine. And our jewels, everything, beautifully dressed. This is made up for the big event. And all the was the master of ceremonies. He started off, ladies and gentlemen, to be amongst beauty like you. God like me, it's absolutely wonderful for him to say that. But then, uh, his next sense of, you know, when I was nine years old, we lived in Bella Bella, Walmart. The teacher said, what do you want for Christmas? That was easy. I wrote on my little piece of paper, I want a John Deere. Do you know that one with the pedals and the steering with a green one? I mean, there's nothing better than a John Deere. But little Stefan was from the children's home in Bella Bella. He wrote, I'm alone, no mates. The children scorn me. I'm afraid. I want only one thing for Christmas. I want the mommy. It all burst into tears and was a salad. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think I'm Melinda. She was a uh, uh, mix of the beauty. You can see my neighbors and Melinda enters my door. She was. Uh, Runner up in the top 10 in the world in this universe last year. We had four last. And she's now full time busy working on working with women in despair. And, and wonderful women. And Adrian is, uh, he worked after that with 65,000 school children visiting schools. Not spare spite, who's bigger. It was nice for me to write this off the script. Great people despite their beauty. They are engaged. And I'm uh, waiting for the marriage invitation. But uh, both Ali and Melinda, they've got everything to brag. But they're humble, they touch the heart. For an example, you know, preaching, be humble, and touch the heart. And beautiful people like this.
get to the end. The words I use, those are dear lives to do the We need to establish a, a paradigm shift in our conceptual thinking towards the uh, sustainability of the <coughs> agriculture society. Thank you. Did I say anything? Dear friends, I'm worried about the, the farmers in the Western Cape and the people working with them. I'm really worried. I visit them often. It's close to my home. Can you take my hand and help me? Can you do something? If it was a top language for a 16 year old, who's you 16? But top language. <laughs> <laughs> top language for the 16 year old, and you'll have the world in your hands. A buzzword. You make a fool of the person and you put them in fight flight. That's all you do. Don't be the cabinet minister. Get <laughs> nicely on time. Two minutes to go. My last example, in the last thing, words. One example still. It's the space between the words, they really count. You know what? We must do this. Oh, yes, sir. Come, 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 come. If you can go be tomorrow up in the Nielsi, you know that, that restaurant in the bottom. See you there. Spaces between the words make an enormous impact on what people perceive what you say. I'm not talking about listening at all now. That's a different topic. It's in my inner thing you can download. Listening is more, more vital than talking. And how we listen. That is a story in itself. A very last example. Some years ago, we had uh, I'm involved in this wine farm. Uh, it's a beautiful bottle that you have with you. The cradle of Pinotage in the world, the first Pinotage ever, and it's wonderful. To be in the wine industry, a difficult industry, you can learn a lot about the lessons of life, the value chain, how to make money outside it, how to... Uh, it's a world of love, of creativity, if it ever was. Sadly, 30% of the world over production. And even France is going down the drain now, it's difficult to... At the time, we organized... Uh, a wine tasting session for a bunch of ladies. Dirk Morkel is the manager and owner of Bellevue, and Dirk conducted it, and me and Dirk wrote the script. If you work with ladies alone, gentlemen, you follow the Tupperware model. In Tupperware, you don't sell plastic bags, that's not what you do. You sell a relationship. If you heard ladies of a black and decker party, it doesn't happen. Uh, so we designed the, the start with a story. Typical said, this is the 2008 Shiraz, a bit high in Tenin. Acidity can be a bit higher. Another um, six months in the wood, it would be okay. Boring, man. That day, Turkey stood in front of them at the bottle, talking about the blends Shiraz, Cabernet, Verdo, lovely blend. This is wine. And uh, gave me this bottle this week. He said, Ladies, my dad was everything in my life. My dad learned me about wine. I miss my dad. My dad also learned me the love for horses. I love horses. My horse was 15, 16 years old. Time was on for her. She was not young anymore. My foot felt every day. I combed her. Fever was running a bit high. And from the vet, the vet listened and said, Oh, Ducky? I don't think so. She's not going to make it. Inject her in the neck with a long meal. It's a slowly passed away. Therefore, this wine is called Tomorrow. All the girls burst into tears. <laughs> another, another 50 good session the next week. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a hand for Becky Mocker. <laughs> How do, how do you pitch write it up? It's all in the articles, time running out for us. Use stories. To write a story is difficult. Go to IOPS of Fables. You can do it without copyright. It's more than 75 years old. The frogs is an ice of fable. I just put it in the color eye. You can do anything. Ladies and gentlemen, rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. Go and drink wine and hell you're just down in the bottle of Ray Road. The remember what Steve Jobs said. But then you're going to forget what a show is wrong, what did you feel, you will always remember. And with Steve Jobs, it's, it's, it's in the text, you can download it tonight. All the communication, communication steps that Steve Jobs took.
uh, the biggest company on earth. It's all about stories and metaphors. Write it out in full, rehearse, 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 your stories, your stories. At the end, one person left, who is your greatest enemy? With your partners, your partner, your second biggest enemy, who is that first and foremost your greatest enemy? So, a business is a lonely thing, Dirkie is a lonely thing. Tonight, 10 o'clock, it's lonely. When I was in the Air Force, at the age of 18, I flew bombers, man, that is the best job one can do. No, fantastic. Wear a, a yellow thing, when you pull two things, when you fall in the water, the building blew up. We called it a May West. May West was a famous actress, and she said, when you're lonely, 10 o'clock in the night, switch off the tablet and the Samsung. Take a book, take a pen. Right, dear diary, today was a terrible day. John believed it all and he didn't bring the stuff he promised. It's bad, I don't know what to do now. Write it down. Because maybe we said, keep a diary for one day. It will keep you. Thank you, Christina. Mm -hmm.